my name is John Slocum, and today we're going to teach you everything you need to know to become a master of using eBay item specifics in 6-bit. Let's start by defining item specifics and what they're used for. An item specific is really just a property of your item. And the reason we use item specifics is because different sellers aren't necessarily all going to use the same words and terms to define their items. So that can make it very difficult for, for buyers to find items. By defining item specifics, eBay is giving a common set of terms and values that you can specify for your items, making the search a lot easier. In addition to making it easier for your buyers to find your items, by entering a complete set of item specifics, eBay is going to give you a better placement in their best match search, so more people will see your items. Uh, for these reasons, we really recommend that whenever possible, you enter the most complete set of item specifics uh, that you can for your item. Let's start by looking at an example. Item specifics are added on the item edit window. So we're going to open up one of our items here, the $20 note. And you'll see down in the item specifics group that the item specifics for this item are circulated or uncirculated, type, and denomination. If we change the category to, say, toys slinky, you'll notice that there's a completely different set of item specifics item condition and ages in this case, which only makes sense because the properties of an old $20 note are definitely going to be different than the properties of a slinky. So let's go up and change the category back to our original uh, continental currency, colonial currency, and fill in the item specifics. So for circulated or uncirculated, we're going to choose from the available values. We'll choose circulated. For type, uh, we'll put in continental. So you see that we can either choose from the drop-down or we can actually type values in. And the dot denomination is $20. Now the item specifics you see here are the eBay created item specifics. But we're not limited to that. We can create our own custom item specifics also. Let's say we wanted to keep track of the state that the note was issued in. Uh, we could create our own custom item specific called state. We're going to do that from the edit item specifics window and we get to that by clicking on the little pencil icon in the item specifics group. So that opens our manage item specifics window where we can say we want a new item specific. We'll give it the name of state. Click OK. And then we can enter the different states that we want to appear in the drop-down. In this case Pennsylvania, Virginia, and New York. And we'll click OK. And when we go back to our item, we see that we have another item specific called state. And we can just choose values from the drop downs, just like any other item specific. Uh, this item specific will also get sent to eBay and appear on your listing. As we mentioned earlier, item specifics are different for each different category. And custom item specifics work the same way. Each category gets its own set of custom item specifics. This can become very tedious if you have a lot of different categories that you want to enter the same item specific for. A good example of this would be properties like width and height for paper money. In many programs, what you'd have to do uh, for each of the different paper money U.S. categories, you'd have to go in and create a separate custom item specific for each category. In 6-bit, we've solved this problem with what we call inherited item specifics. With inherited item specifics, you can define a custom item specific for any parent category, and all of the sub-children categories under that category will get that same item specific. Let's look at an example. We'll use our example of width and height on Paper Money US. So what we do is we go up and we're going to edit the item specifics. In this case, we're going to choose the parent category. The parent category is Paper Money US. And then we're going to define our new item specifics under the parent category. So we type in width. And we'll type in some default values that we want to have listed in our drop-down. And then we'll create our height custom item specific. And enter some possible values there. 3 inches, 4 inches, or 5 inches. When we click OK, we'll go back and see that width 
and height are now item specifics in our colonial currency, which is a child of the parent paper money U.S. If we go up and choose another child of paper money U.S., let's say Confederate currency, we'll see that width and height are now also item specifics for that category. And we've saved all kinds of time not having to add custom item specifics to each of those child categories. Up to this point in the video, all the item specifics we've entered are sent up to eBay and are made public. But what if we want to store information about an item that we don't want public? We want it just for our own use. Think of it as a custom field you can define for each category. An example of this would be a customs description. When you're printing postage, uh, international postage, you need to fill out a customs form, and that customs form has to have a description of the item. Well, you might not want this to be the same description that you've entered in your eBay listing, so you might want to have a separate customs description. You can create your own private custom item specific to store this information. You create a private item specific just like any other item specific. In this case, we want customs description also to be inherited in all categories. So let's go ahead and open up the Manage Item Specifics window. And as we mentioned, the parent we're going to choose is All, so that this item is inherited in all categories. Then we'll enter our Customs Item Specific name of Customs Description. Click OK. And what's going to make this a private item specific is that we're going to check the Private box. And for private item specifics, we can choose the data type. In this case, it's going to be text, so we'll leave it. And we could enter a default value if we wanted to, or any user-defined values. We won't need to do that for customs description, though. When we return, we'll see that we have a customs description item specific. And no matter what category we change, we're going to see customs description. One last thing we're going to talk about is how you can make use of these item-specific values in your description wrappers and your emails. You've taken all the time to enter the values for item specifics. You shouldn't have to replicate those in your descriptions and your emails later. Let me show you how to add item specifics to your description wrappers. We're going to go over and click on the Edit button to edit our description wrapper. And then just like any other field from the Items window, um, all we have to do is put square brackets around the name of the field, and that name will be resolved later. So to get our state and height custom item specific values in, we just put state and height in square brackets. So when we go in preview, we'll see that this bill is from Virginia and is four inches tall. I hope this video has been educational. I'd like to urge you to check out the other videos in our series. And as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.